today I'm just looking at my Boxford book for the lathe. This was published in 1971 and is the 7th edition. So some of the information in here is very old. And I was just looking at the oil and grease needed to lubricate the lathe. It's a time of year where most people on this side of the world won't venture into the workshop because of the cold. And for those that don't, I hope you've oiled and protected your lathe against rust for the winter. I thought I'd give my lathe a good clean and oil ready for the new season. Now before you ask me what oil I use on the lathe, the book says to use an SAE 20 oil and a good quality garage grease for the bearings. Now due to oil development over the last 50 years, I use car engine oil on my lathe because it's a synthetic oil, it has rust inhibitors and also it has additives to prolong the life of the metal. So let's go into the workshop, see how we do it. Today I'm just cleaning the lathe down, getting ready for the new year. I'll start by giving the lathe a good clean down. And I just thought I'd point out some of the places where you oil the lathe, because some of them are not too clear in the handbook. And I just thought I'd mention some problems that you may have if you're not oiling the right places. So let's start with the tailstock. I have added this on myself so yours probably won't have this. Uh, the two points that you oil on the tailstock, one is uh, on the top here, and the other one is at 45 degrees on the end of the spindle. If you wind it forward you should see in the groove on the top of you some oil in the and I'll put some on the slide way which I've just cleaned. And on the V. Then moving down. This is just the bearing block that lubricates the end of your lead screw. Just give it a pump until you see the oil coming out just inside and on the other end. If I had the top slide right across as far as it will go, you also probably go further than that. In fact, it should wind right off the end so you can see the thread. But I've got a uh, DRO scale bolted to the side so it limits. So I'm just putting some oil on the thread and also on the slides. Now before all that runs all over the front, I'll just take the clean cloth again, take it off any excess. So on the cross slide, we have an oiler here. Doesn't need a lot of oil, just one pump. And this will oil the bush, the bearings inside, and it will come out underneath eventually. And the same on the compound slide. It's an oiler on the top. Just give it one pump. Be 
move it back to expose the thread. I'm just slacking in the two grub screws that hold the compound slide to the top slide. It should lift up. Let's put that on the top. Clean the slides. And then I could just put a little oil on the screw. As you get to the end, just wipe any excess off. Wipe the face clear. Spot of oil on the screw inside. And I'll just put a little bit on the face. So the compound and tighten up the grub screws. Now do the other end of the compound slide. See the oil's already come through from the first bit. I've wound the cross slide fully forwards, then we can get at the back and a spot of oil on the screw at the back here and the two slides. Just return it to about central position. Then we move down now to the apron. So on the apron I'll just point out where the oil points are. First one is this hole. This lubricates the half nuts here. So unless you're screw cutting you don't need to put any lubrication in there because all it'll do, it sits in t on the top of the half nut which is just behind here, there's a little recess and the oil sits in there so when you engage the half nuts the oil that's sitting inside will run down and go through a small hole in the half nut and lubricate each side of the nut so there's no point in putting oil in there unless you're screw cutting the next place to oil is this one here and this little tube puts oil into a gear on the back you see it running out on the base here that lubricates Travis gear that's at the back of that another oil filler is here the end of the shaft so I'll just put a pump in there Some will run out. 
Now, this shaft's important because the oil goes through and lubricates the small gear at the back. Now, if the shaft is wrong, you won't get lubrication to the gear. And what I mean about that is this hole has to be at 12 o'clock on the top. So if that shaft has moved round and the holes on the bottom, you won't be putting any oil in the back of the gear. Let me show you that on a diagram. This is the hole in the end of the shaft and it should be at 12 o'clock. If it's down here, that hole will be at the bottom. When you put oil into the hole, it goes along this hole and this hole breaks into one that goes in the centre and also has a, another hole coming through. So the oil will come through here, down onto the gear, onto the edge of the gear, onto the bore of the gear. Whereas if this hole is at the bottom, the oil will just go in. It won't some might travel up and into there, but what will happen, most of it will run back out and down. So it's important that that hole is at 12 o'clock. Now down the bottom here you can see a little oil filler. And you just put some oil in there. This runs into a reservoir which lubricates the clutch for the Travis. Then the final oil feed is on this one. This lubricates a spindle for the backwards and forwards of the saddle. I'll just mop up any excess. So that's the saddle done, now we'll move down to the other end, the headstock. On the top of the headstock we have a grease nipple on the left and the right. These two grease nipples feed grease to the main bearings in the headstock. Just give a pump of grease to each one. Limit the amount of grease you give to the bearing because what happens is the bearings are not sealed so some of the grease will come down into the bearing, some will come to this side of the bearing, some will go the other side. Now if you get the grease going the other side and the same on this, you start filling grease up around the bearing inside and eventually it starts to throw around inside the headstock and you end up with grease in the headstock. So you might think by pumping seven or eight times onto this and putting a lot of grease in, it's going somewhere. All it's doing is filling your headstock up with grease and at a later date you'll be wiping it off your belt. And wipe any excess off because then any excess oil or grease could attract swarf. Small oil inside, you can just see inside there there's a small hot oil filler. You turn the chuck to get the position of the oiler so you can then put your oil can through and oil that. But this only needs to do when you're in back gear. And that's because the pulley that's inside the headstock is in two halves and some pins come out and lock into this half so it turns as one unit. When you're in back gear and you pull this lever it separates the two halves and that's where the bearing in the middle needs to be lubricated so that the back gear works okay. So if you go lower down now see there's another oiler here this is the other end of the lead screw let's give that some oil and I always oil the lead screw every day if I'm using the traverse or thread cutting because there's only one lead screw on this which operates the traverse and the thread cutting half nuts so you need to lubricate that now the next point for lubrication is in the gearbox on the end 
Let's have a look in here. So I start with this oil filler here. If you give it too much oil, all that will happen is it will all run down inside of the gearbox and end up on the bottom of the gearbox door or on the tray at the bottom. This lubricates the spindle. There are two oil holes on the end of these gears. That lubricates the spindle that the gear's on. And then on some of the main gears, there are holes in the side, 45 degrees. You can see on the bottom. Turn that round. The bottom gear here, there's another hole. And that just puts lubrication to the centre of the gear. So if you're using the gearbox, cutting a thread or using it for a traverse, you need to oil regular the different gears. On the end, the back of the headstock, there's a small oil hole there. It looks like a grease nipple on mine, but it's not, it's for oil. Uh, that oils the back gear inside. And what, what it does, it goes along the shaft that this back gear is located on and gives oil to the back gear when you're using it. So when you use the back gear, you need to oil that one as well as the one inside the hole. And I think that's about it for oiling. I'll just close this up. Now I'll just give you a little tip. If you get yourself one of these magnetic pickups, this one has a small LED in the end. They're not that expensive. This particular make will clean the hole here. You can see that pickup goes straight down the hole and will pick out any swarf. Another use for the magnetic pickup is if you move your tailstock out of the way you can then put this down the the back. It'll pick up any swarf that's, that's fallen into the casting void. Well that's all ready for the next project. Well that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.